So I want to call the filmmaker Steve Balderson up and uh, the cast, Jane Weedland, Starina Johnson, Mark Booker, you too, Jane. But if we all come up, there will be go. nobody here. <laughs> I know. Is there, hold on. I'm just going to set. I'm just going to set. Oh, okay. This feels informal. There's a couch. Who's hold sitting on. in there? That'd be me. What? That's, oh. How does this happen? Nobody tells me these things. There's a whole couch. Oh, I didn't know that. Still in the smalls. <laughs> Hi, thank you. <laughs> No. no. Not yet. Here, well, switch. Don't really need them. Yes, you do. No, we can talk loud. Well, they're here. We got to use them. Oh, okay. There we go. We'll share. Do we have any questions? First of all, let's do some questions before we just. Am I, I right have back one. there? We did actually cast one by one, but it came about because our film that we all worked on called The Casserole Club was playing at a film festival in London called Rain Dance. And I thought, well, if we're all going to be there, we should do a movie while we're there. And then the screenwriter and I got together and we crafted this story and said, well, we'll just shoot it while we're there. And then it worked out that we did it while we were there, and then we got to have the, the premiere for Casserole Club, and then when we weren't doing that, we were shooting Culture Shock. Yes. Very true. Totally illegally, without permits. We, with, we with were, I was accosted <laughs> once by the police, and then one night we were out by, where was it that we were at? The, well, we were one block from the Ministry of Defense. Had no idea. <laughs> And we're out there with cameras and lights and stuff, and this guy just came up, and he was more like the look on his face. He was more like yeah. surprised that we were there, like how, the audacity of us to be there. He was almost, he was like, maybe I shouldn't approach these guys, and it was completely harmless. But he did. He just had this horrified look, and he was like, "You can't be here." And we were like, "Fine, that's fine." We would just went around the corner and we did the rest of the scene. And another time, we just I would throw on the, like the best like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I'm from America. I didn't know that." <laughs> and just you know, Hank Hill the hell. It was out like, of it, you know? oh, it was like, we're, like, we're from Canada. And they're like, wow, it's, America, it's real. That's really Canada. how Americans are. Like, it's like the freaking Simpsons. And I was just wearing a wig. Like, I don't. I, <laughs> yeah, that's I, I that's even... okay. In hindsight. Oh, and her whole wardrobe came from <laughs> no, Victoria. She found it yeah. in the mall in Victoria I while did. she was I here shooting round my ball. My entire wardrobe <laughs> for Culture Shock was found in J.C. Penney's from Victoria, Texas. Yes. <laughs> And I sent him pictures. I'm not even. I'm not making that up. I sent him pictures while we were shooting round ball, actually. Yes. And I was like, I found this wardrobe in Victoria, Texas. Do you think this works? And Steve's like, Yeah. Yeah. What? And you know, in hindsight, I'm like, Okay, we're going to London to shoot something illegally. Did I really pick a girl to wear pink and purple yeah, hair and like this outfit? I'm like, what was I thinking? Of course people will see us. <laughs> was, yeah. But actually, I became the beacon. Like when we were in the underground, people would be like, where's the purple hair? Yeah, was, <laughs> right. Oh, that. there. We need to go that way. <laughs> it was sad. Are there any other questions? Um, I think we were there for like 10 days, maybe 12 days. A yeah, 18. What? Really? Yeah, 18 yeah, well, we days. Had, it was 18 when we shot 14. I remember. Yeah. Well, we got there and there was a couple of oh, days. I'm sorry. Yeah, there was like two days before, two days after. Yeah, you weren't there because you came like three days late. in. Yeah. 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 So it was Actually. like two weeks solid, but. Two weeks of shooting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But. 10. 10, yeah. Was it 10? Well, we 10 would shoot, like, we would meet for breakfast and then we would shoot for a couple hours and then we'd have lunch. Okay. And then we would have I mean, another I, couple I, hours. I feel like I should. Know, <laughs> and then we would eat again. And then we have another maybe one scene, and then we'd have dinner. I feel like I should explain that all of Steve's shooting schedules revolve around food. Yeah, they really <laughs> so do. So if you're on Steve's movie, you're going to gain about 20 pounds. <laughs> so I have to figure in, like, my costume when I start needs to be able to fit me when I finish, basically. Thank you. What? No, you no, you don't get your own. I get my own. No. Are you singing now? What? Look at this. Are like, you lonesome? Uh, 
<laughs> Why am I singing Elvis? I don't therapy? know. <laughs> Another question? Nobody? <laughs> Well, okay, the supporting characters from London, we actually, I, I auditioned for, uh, via Skype because I'm based in Kansas and I couldn't obviously fly over there to, you know, have a whole casting call with them. So I would audition them via Skype and then have them do auditions on tape. And then I picked the people and then we met them for the first time when we were on the set. And some of the locations we had never been to until we were actually there filming. And you walk in and sometimes you just have to improvise. And, and I mean, sometimes you can't completely plan everything if you're going to do it on the fly like this, which isn't necessarily the best for every movie, but it is, I think, really good for somebody to do it at least once, you know, to see what it's like to just go out there and make it happen with what you have. Yeah, but the extras, like people on the street and in the subway, they were actually real people because we didn't close anything off. <laughs> and it's 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 not legal to shoot in the underground. No, like, I mean, it, I mean, you can. We're the most you, illegal. You can sort of you can ever. sort of get away with it on the street because you can like you're a tourist shooting footage of your friends being stupid. But uh, in the underground, it's prohibited. It's strictly right. prohibited that you film under there and. There we were, like in costume, walk, you know, like walking around shooting uh, in the underground. Sure, it was really great. Cameras. Yeah, like there's right. cameras all over the place. So constantly while we were traveling from place to place via the underground or taxi or what, you know, whatever it was, we were just we we're constantly in wardrobe, constantly in character, constantly just moving around from place to place because we we're always being filmed. Yeah, it, it, I will say this. It was a really odd situation because I would have to be like in costume at what, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. So we would be on the underground platform with all these business people <laughs> who hated me so much. I mean, like a lot. Like they really did not like the fact that I was in a purple wig and bright costume. They really didn't like me. It was very sad. <laughs> So you just went recently to Hong Kong and did the same thing. Yes. So what's that movie called? That one's called Far Flung Star. And you, you know, when we were on the Casserole Club set, we were joking, and there's a part in Camp Casserole where Booker and I kind of talk about, what, I wonder what Steve would do if we shot something, you know, and Booker says, in London. And really? Yeah, yeah. Did you? Wait, what? At the, at the end <laughs> of the <laughs> We're get, a room. <laughs> get a room, kids. We're totally um, you. But yeah, and so it, and then whenever really you went and did the China I thing, I, 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 the Hong Kong thing, I thought that was really cool. So why don't you talk about that a little bit and some of the new people you had the opportunity to couple with? I mean, really, it's about collaboration, and you know, I've, it's been great working with you, and and I think that you're a really good source of people who really want to learn, like Michael, mm. and and what you've done for him. And so, talk a little bit about. Um, the shoot in Hong Kong and how that happened. Well, when we finished Culture Shock and I thought we got away with that. <laughs> we we did it. We but didn't not get just, arrested. <laughs> right. And but we and actually probed. it was awesome. We went to a place and we didn't know these locations. We didn't know these people and we made a movie. We made a story. And it was something that, you know, people from age eleven or twelve, my godson my nephews can appreciate this as good or better than we can you know i thought that's really amazing to just be able to tell this story and i thought well if we can do that we should do it again i mean i like alcohol i like tobacco but i don't do drugs and there was such a high that i felt this addiction after that sort of like wow we went there we should do it again but bigger let's go to hong kong you know, or like whatever. And so I was like driven to go there and do the same thing and with a very similar structure of the story. Like if you saw that movie, which is right now being uh, finished in post-production, after this, you'd be like, oh, that's like the sequel, even though they're not really. It's just a very similar story. Um, going there was really interesting because it was almost the opposite of being in London because they it was legal to shoot in the streets. And it, they, they made it sort of ex acceptable for filmmakers to 
kind of run around and do stuff. So it was a little different in that sense. Like we, we really didn't need to hide so much. Um, but there was one island where there's this big Buddha. And you know what? Buddha, he'll get you every time. <laughs> it was closed to commercial photography. So if you're Tom Hanks or... And you shot there anyway. Well, yes, I did. <laughs> and so the moral of the story is that's about the time you get your camera out. Right. So we went there and we did it. And when we finished doing it, I was like, did we just do that? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, okay, we've done London. We've done Paris. We've done Hong Kong. Where don't, else can don't we do the, Don't do the Tom Brady thing right now and be like, eh, is that it? You shot. Well, on, you no, shot I mean, on I saw sacred like, holy this land. This interview's over. <laughs> what do you want to go to India next? You shot on sacred holy land. You. Well, I know, <laughs> but it's like okay. Well, okay. At some point, you have to stop doing that thing, and then you have to say, okay, well, what story are we telling? And so then, the last film that I, I just finished shooting was done in Kansas, mm -hmm. and it was on a controlled set where we could like have some lighting and some sound and like not be worried about the police, and it was great. <laughs> so it's like, you know, after like doing that, it's like I needed to get that out of my system. And now I'm like back into doing Setting something up else. The shot. Yeah. Planning it out, getting your sketchbook back out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now nah, it's good. Um, you've done a lot for independent film and you've been in, in independent film for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. How many, how, how many feature, this how many feature you? films have you done? How many documentaries? I don't know. I've done five or six documentaries and five or six, seven features, narratives. So you've got two waiting to come out. Yeah. Do you have something else started? Well, yeah, but I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I mean, I have like I have like five on the back burner, right, but it's right. like which one is going to be the one that like is the one that we do next? I don't know. Well, we'll see. Any more questions? It's late. Thanks for sticking around. Does anyone know if there's like a bar open? I saw somebody <laughs> drinking. I just feel like want to drink. That's I feel like that's not fair. Two o five is open, right? Just, uh, Greeks two o five. I think you're holding out on us. You know, Aaron. You don't, don't know? know? Is it almost time for? Is it All almost right. time for breakfast? Not <laughs> what even. What time is it? Thanks I'm a sorry, lot. Good night, you guys. Thank you guys.